Good morning. Welcome to Floss Tube Extra number two. My name is Sarah and you're very welcome here. This morning I want to show you how to wrap an embroidery hoop for displaying your stitchy work. So some of you asked from my previous floss tube number two, I think, if I would show you with a little bit more detail how to wrap the hoop in fabric, which is what I did to display um, a couple of my embroidery pieces. Um, it's very simple. Uh, once somebody shows you how, you will think, oh, well, I could have thought of that myself, really. <laughs> uh, but sometimes it just does take someone to show you how. So you don't need lots of supplies. You need the hoop that fits your piece of embroidery or cross stitch or fabric or whatever it is that you want to display in a hoop because there are lots of uh, other ways of using these hoops if you think outside of the box. You need your hoop. You will need uh, some fabric, whatever it is that you want to use. Um, I'm just wrapping this hoop this morning. It's not for a particular project. Um, it's actually just a hoop for stitching. So I'm wrapping it um, anyway to protect, but I'll, I'm using the opportunity to give you this little tutorial. So choose your fabric, um, nice longish strips if you strip a fabric, if you can, because it's going to mean that you don't need so many strips. The shorter your piece, the more strips you're going to have to have and the more ends you're going to have to fix in. So a fairly decent strip. This is probably 18, 20 inches okay, um, in length. I cut my fabric into half inch widths. Okay. So, and today I've got an eight inch hoop. <laughs> and I, I'm always holding things in front of my face. I'm gonna to have to learn not to do that. Anyway, back to the serious stuff. Half inch strips of fabric. I have an eight inch hoop. I think I'm gonna need about five of these lengths. So I've cut five of them today, but if I need more, I'll just cut another one. So I don't have any maths to help you um, to help you along, to help you know how many strips to cut, but you're probably, you know, you're probably going to need a good 60 inches to a meter for somewhere like an, a six, seven, eight inch hoop um, of the half inch width. It, it will depend on how much overlap you use when you're wrapping and that sort of thing, which is why there's no, no easy answer, but you just make sure you've got your strips, pre-cut them, into your half inch widths. You can do it a little bit wider or a little bit narrower if you like, but you'll either be wrapping for a lot longer or you might have more things. I've found that half, half an inch works really pretty well for me. You'll also need some double-sided sticky tape, a pair of scissors for the tape, and some scissors for your fabric, okay? So you don't need lots of supplies. You need the two pairs of scissors, the tape, the fabric the hoop in front of my face again <laughs> okay so first thing to do is to separate your hoop so unscrew and separate the hoop parts we're going to wrap the outer because remember I'm showing you how to wrap for display purposes we're going to wrap the outer portion of your hoop so you can just leave the inner portion aside and we're going to take some sticky double-sided sticky tape and we're going to put it along the edge of our hoop just along here so double-sided sticky tape and I are sometimes not great friends I hate having to try and separate it <laughs> this is not a particular kind of um of tape either this is just from this our local supermarket really it's just something off their shelf um, I should say that I'm just showing you how to do this for a decorative purpose. This is not um, for archiving purposes or keeping your piece beautiful for 200 years. So if you are worried about adhesives or that, um, maybe you need to do a little bit more research because I haven't really looked into that for this purpose. For me, this is um, for little gift hoops and, and things that are they're just going to be around for a number of years for you know for a while um for people to enjoy there certainly isn't any damage this is you know a reasonable quality um double-sided sticky tape which i've finally managed to get separated from its backing 
paper. Um, yeah, so like I say, I'm not, I'm not sure about the archival properties <laughs> of this process. Um, if that does concern you, maybe this isn't the technique for the particular project. But, but I have had some of these hoops wrapped hoops up for a number of years. There's not been any discoloration. There's not been any bleed through the fabrics or anything like that. So it's not something that I worry about. Okay, disclaimer done. <laughs> Let's stick some sticky tape on to our hoop now. I am going to pop it underneath the screw. You could actually remove the screw if you wanted to. And because I'm trying to do this with my, to keep my hands out of the way, it's being a little bit more tricky, but pop it under the screw and right up there on top of that metal, the little metal bracket that's on. Okay. And then we'll pull it down around the top of the hoop, sorry. Trying to concentrate on doing it, but I need to make sure I'm showing you, otherwise there's no point in this tutorial. Okay. So I'm pressing it on. And I'm just going to cut here about eight or 10 inches along. And the only reason that I do that is just because it's awkward to work with this hanging off the end. So it's just for ease. If you're happy working with it hanging off the end, you don't need to make the cut. Okay, so I've wrapped about eight or 10 inches, oh, sorry, I've stuck about eight or 10 inches of double-sided sticky tape to the hoop. And I'm going to reveal a little bit more of it, but not all of it. Just pull the backing away for about four or five inches. That just helps your fabric not to stick down here while you're in the middle of wrapping. So you're uh, not, having the whole hoop wrapped at once or not revealing the whole piece of tape just means you're not creating a little bit of sticky difficulty, <laughs> okay? That's why I do it this way. It's not the only way, by any means even the right way, <laughs> but it works and it works nicely. Then you take a piece of your half inch width of fabric and you start, you want to put the end of your fabric, the start of your fabric, here on the inside of the hoop. Okay, can you see where I'm putting that? Of course, it's not sticky down there, is it? But we're gonna hold that in place. The reason we want it there is because when you push your piece of embroidery or cross stitch in, this end is going to be held between the hoops and you won't see it, okay? We're also going to wrap over it, so I'm going to just start wrapping, okay? So if you can, whoops, dear me, it's all come off on me. I'm gonna have another go. Maybe I should stop talking and just do. So if you can see, I've put it in there and I've tried, I'm so sorry, this is so wobbly tried to wrap it straight so that I get a nice fit against the metal bracket. Okay, and then as I come over and make my first wrap, like this, I'm going to start pulling at an angle. So the first piece went on straight just so that I get a nice straight line up against here, up against the metal screw bracket. And now I can start just moving, wrapping at a slight angle and overlap a little bit as you go, okay? And when you're doing this bit yourself, it looks much less awkward <laughs> than when I'm doing it out here at a distance so that you can see it. So we just keep wrapping. I did explain before that using fabric cuts like this you will end up with frayed threads. Now you can go back and cut some of those at the end, tidy it up a little bit, but you will have a, a fray that happens naturally with the fabric. I like that, I don't mind it. I think it adds to the character of the piece that I'm, um, that I'm framing, the piece of embroidery or cross stitch that I'm framing. If you really don't like the frayed look, I did mention on floss tube number two that what you can do instead is use some nice ribbon and the ribbon will work perfectly because it's got a lovely finished edge, so you won't have to deal with all this fraying. Okay, 
So now it's as easy as keep wrapping, keep wrapping, pull back your tape a little bit more. You can go all the way with that piece now. And we'll just keep wrapping and wrapping and wrapping again. I probably should speed this up, but I'm not quite sure that I know how. <laughs> so you'll have to bear with me <laughs> as we just, just keep wrapping, just keep wrapping. Anyway, sorry. That's what you get when you have a four year old in the house. <laughs> okay, so this big piece of fray, I'm just gonna cut away. I can tidy that up later. There's another, another kind of piece there, that's it. Now we've reached the end of one of my strips. I'm gonna to have to join another strip. What I want again is to have the ends of the strips underneath, tucked in between the two pieces of hoop like this, okay? So this bit's too long to wrap all the way around again. I'm going to cut it. I'm going to cut it with my scissors along here so that there's a, an end inside in between the hoops, okay? So there's a little snip. And hopefully you can see now that I'll press that around. And, um, sorry, it will fall to the inside of the hoop, okay? Now the way we're gonna hold that down is by putting our next piece on. And we'll just pop the next piece, if I can show you, just start it over the top again, keep the, keep the edges to the inside of that hoop, hold it tight with your thumb and finger, and then wrap. And once you get a couple of wraps on, there we go. That's all held nicely in place in there and you can't there's no, no flapping ends, it's all tucked in. And so you just keep wrapping again. I hope that, that I was able to show that, okay? I know there's, it's difficult having fingers, hands, all <laughs> in the way of the camera, and I don't have a fancy setup here. I'm recording on an iPad in front of me at my dining table, so. <laughs> so hopefully that worked. I'll show you one more time um, in just a second. So now I've run out of sticky tape because I wasn't concentrating. There we go, that's the end of my sticky tape. So I'm gonna get another piece and hopefully be able to separate the backing paper from it. They need some kind of magic way of doing this, I think. Oh, oh nearly, nearly. <laughs> There might be some editing goes on here to move things along, <laughs> things along a bit. Here we go. Okay. Fold that bit back now. And here I go with some more tape. So pressing the tape down nice and smooth. This tape is... Um, Maybe half an inch. Yeah, just under half an inch wide. So you could get a narrower tape, but this one works okay. Um, this one works pretty well, actually. And we're just gonna cut it again, smooth that down. Okay. And I'm gonna fold back again, a little bit at a time so that I don't have too much sticky tape revealed. Wrapping, just wrapping at an angle. Hope you can see. Wrapping. There we go. And I'm going to show you one more join. as we come to the end of the second strip. I've got my length, it's not going to wrap all the way over again, so I'm gonna cut it a little bit shorter so that it finishes on the inside of the hoop. Okay, and then I'm just going to pop 
the next strip over the top of that. Again, making sure that the end of it, the edge of it is on the inside of the hoop. And then wrap over a couple of times and that's it secured again. There's no loose ends in there. Okay, so now I think I'll do the next couple of strips till we get towards the end because you don't need to sit here watching me wrap and wrap and wrap. <laughs> and I'll be back in a minute. Okay, as you approach the end, you've got your last piece of tape and you want to take that right up underneath the screw plate. Again, you know, you can take that off. I tend not to, but I probably should have for this purpose. Let's see. It would have been so much easier but I don't always do things the easy way. <laughs> Screws out. Okay, come right up here with your tape and cut it in so that it will have a nice close fit to that bracket. Okay, and that's that. And because we've not got too long a piece, I'll just reveal all of the sticky tape and keep wrapping until we come to the end. Now as we come to the end, I want to try and bring it right over nice and close to the metal bracket, see, there, and wrap it underneath. Now what you can do at the very end is you can put a tiny piece of sticky tape there to just hold the last end in because you haven't got something else to wrap that over or even a tiny tiny dab of glue but if you're using glue make sure that you're fully it's fully fully dried before you add your your needlework in at all so i'm just going to add in a teeny tiny piece of the sticky tape eventually Should have blue petered it and had one already prepared, shouldn't I? I really am very bad at this. Here we go, yay! <laughs> okay, so I'm just putting this tiny piece on the back, on the inside of the hoop, on the back of the fabric, and pulling down there. Okay, so that's nice and snug and in place and you have a wrapped hoop. I'm just going to take my scissors and trim up some of the very frayed pieces. In some fabrics you find fray more than others. Um, I have wrapped hoops with beautiful um, Liberty of London cotton lawn and it doesn't fray very much at all. And it looks really nice and you only need a very, very small piece um, of an accent print then to, um, to just really set off your piece of, of embroidery. So it's quite nice choosing the coordinates and something that works really well for your piece. And it's a nice way to finish in a hoop and it's an inexpensive way to finish your work as well. Because we all know that um, framing costs are enormous. <laughs> So here we go, I'll put the hoop back together. And put the inner circle in. And there we go, all ready to frame your beautiful piece of cross stitch. Now, this fabric isn't making much of a statement on this particular hoop. For the purposes which I have covered it but I will show you or if you go and look at floss tube number two you will see a number of pieces that I have hoop wrapped um, and fabric wrapped sorry <laughs> fabric wrapped the hoops and they really do make a very 
nice accent to your your cross stitch um or your or your embroidery or whatever else it is that you want to finish so i hope this has been helpful it's probably been a lot longer than it needed to be but um, you know me i like to talk <laughs> so there you go one fabric wrapped hoop see you next time stitch well and stay happy folks bye just a little postscript to the tutorial um, i forgot to mention that this metal screw thing doesn't really do much for me, so I like to have it covered or hidden when I display a piece. You can put something attractive on the front. Once you have your, your needlework in place, you could put a big button or a bow fixture or something like that. But I'm not one for lots of big bows and things, so um, usually what I do is I take a remaining piece of half in, my half inch strip and I just Tuck it under the metal screw. Can you see where it's going? This piece might be a little bit short, but you get the idea. I tie it in just an ordinary bow. Uh, sorry, an ordinary knot. It's just a double, an ordinary double little knot. And I tug on the ends and up they come and they are now pretty much disguising that screw. You can fiddle with them a little bit until you get it to disguise the screw and then you can just trim a nice slanted edge on your little bow and so you have hidden that or at least made it a little bit more discreet. You can also use this part here under the where the screw is, um, where there's a gap in this, the screw in between the two brackets and you feed a piece of ribbon or a piece of fabric under that to make a little hanger and then you